Hello everybody, Mr. Shepesky here. Um, going to run through a little bit of some trigonometry introduction here. This should be following your lesson on um, uh, special right triangles and very soon we'll merge these two ideas together and you'll see how trigonometry kind of all falls into place. So today's objective, um, what are the degrees and radians as you walk around the unit circle? Well, what is the unit circle? First of all, it's just a circle. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, I'm going to be asking you to do something as we go through this. I'm going to ask you to watch this video and create a unit circle with me. We're going to do most of it together. This is an important step in understanding how trigonometry all fits together. I'll give you half of the unit circle and ask you guys to attempt to figure out the other half. Do your best. Submit your drawn unit circle in Canvas, and I will comment on it with mistakes or any suggestions or anything like that. Credit is gonna be given for just completion on this. It's not about if you got anything wrong. I would like you to try to get it right. It's a little bit of math, but not much. But you're gonna be turning in your drawing when you're done. You must watch the entire video. You're not really gonna be knowing what to do and the steps you need to take. So first of all, before we begin, to put this all together towards the end, you're gonna to need to understand a little bit about circumference. So this is an old worksheet I kind of came up with. If we were together, I would have probably had you do this worksheet as a warm up. But um, I just kind of want to show you. Circumference of a circle is the distance around. So if you walk to this outer edge of this circle, all the way around one complete circle, back to the beginning, and I asked you how far you walk, that's kind of perimeter in a square shape, but in a circular shape, it's called circumference. This is the circumference formula. It's two times pi times the radius. So all you have to do for a circle like this, the radius is 4.5. Just substitute a 4.5 in there for your r. You get two times pi times 4.5. This is an exact answer. Two times 4.5 is nine. So this is nine pi. But if you put the, use the pi button and did nine times 3.14, you get around 28.27 this case it's meters. So if I walked around this outside edge, I'd be walking 28.27 meters. You can do that with circles all the time. Here's another example. Um, you need to have a basic foundation in the understanding of circumference is distance around as you put together your unit circle. Now moving forward, here's where I'm gonna ask you to do a little something here. Um, we're gonna be creating our unit circle. Whoever your teacher is next year, um, we'll probably be asking you to do something very similar. If you have this sheet, if you're going to keep anything from this year, next year, I would suggest you keep the sheet we're going to produce together here. So the step one I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw a large circle on a piece of paper. So it'll take up most of your paper. If your paper is eight and a half by 11 and it looks like this, just a regular notebook paper. Um, I wouldn't put it in the center. I'd put it more towards the top, but your circle is going to kind of look like this leave a little bit of room here on the edges, but make it pretty large. So all you need is just probably from the, from the edge of the circle to the edge of the paper, about an inch or two. Um, but try to make it pretty large. Do your best. If you, um, if you have a circular object to trace, that'd be great. If it's close to circular, that's fine too. If you have a compass at home, that would be awesome. Um, if you wanted to kind of just do one of these things and just get a ruler or a stick or another pencil, put a little dot here and measure the length of your pencil here, 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 like several different spots. And then if you connect them all, that's a quick little way to draw a circle. Everything will be equidistant from the center. However you need to do it, try to make it nice. So I would suggest pausing this video and doing that real quickly and then we'll pick it up when we come back. All right, so your circle should be drawn. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna split this circle into fourths and we're going to start to label degrees on each of these fourths that we're gonna split. Now don't do this yet, because we're gonna kind of do this together. We're gonna to be starting with zero degrees where the three would appear in the clock. Kind of how the unit circle works, um, there has to be a reference point and the reference point is we're always going to start like right here where the three would be if this is a clock, and this is going to be our zero. Now, if you were a person who worked on a boat and you worked on navigation, your zero might be due north, 
but in our case for trigonometry, usually the zero starts here. Um, all right, so here's basically what it's going to look like. So we're going to split it into four, so you're going to be drawing this little coordinate plane axes. Do your best to cut it down the middle and do your best to make these as straight as possible. Okay, and now we're going to start right here. We're going to say, well, this is zero degrees. So on the outside of your circle, we'll put a little zero with a degree symbol. This right here, don't draw this part in, but I'm going to show you. This is a 90 degree angle. So this turn here is 90 degrees. So basically, this top up here is going to be a 90 degree turn along our circle. So then, well, what happens if I go another 90 degrees? You got 180 degrees. Put that over here. And then, of course, down here, what's 90 more than 180? Yep, you got it, 270 degrees. So this is basically what it's going to look like here. Now, I'll talk about these little colored dots in a second. But zero starting, 90 up here, 180 here, 270. Math people don't use degrees too often. We like to use something called radians, and that's the learning target today. I will be explaining that very soon. Um, if you were in science classes, physics classes, they like to use degrees a lot. In math, we start with degrees because it's easier, but then we do like to move to radians, and we'll be explaining that very soon. Um, one more thing here is if you start at zero and you go one full complete circle, this could be zero degrees. It could also be a 360 degree full turn. So this kind of has like a double meaning here. Um, it's zero if you're starting or don't draw this in, but so you get the idea if you do a complete rotation like a spinner, you would be rotating 360 degrees. All right, so these four angled measures should be listed. There's actually five if you got this twice. These are called your quadrantal angles. Why are they quadrantal angles? Because they lie on the quadrants. What do I mean by the quadrants? Well, this is a coordinate plane, and we've placed our circle on this coordinate plane. See how that matches there? These up and down axes are like my y-axis, and this left to right axis, horizontal axis, is like my x-axis. This coordinate in the middle is zero, zero. Well, it looks to me like this coordinate here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know, nine and a half. It's not really nine and a half, though. And that's where the unit circle comes in. I'll get to that in a moment. The next thing I'd like you to do, and I'd like you to pause the video as soon as I'm done giving you instructions, is I'd like you to make little marks here along the outside edge of your circle that are around 15 degrees apart. Man, if you had a protractor and made this purple, this would be awesome. If you don't have a protractor, what I'd suggest is you make a little mark, like halfway. And then, now here's the tricky part. You have to put two marks in between the halfway point and each quadrantal angle. So a mark here, and this mark here is optional. Um, you don't have to write it um, because we only care about these yellow dots. But if you want to really kind of make them equally spaced so that everything looks good, you should probably like make a really small line. So you're going to need to do this. So you're going to need to have these yellow little markings here that I have, and they're pinched towards the center. If they're off a little bit, I'm okay with that. I really don't mind. But everything that's in this yellow here, you should have little marks on. And also, I would like you to make the little marks if you haven't yet on the blues. The blues are called the quadrantal angles. And the yellows, well, those are our special angles. And you'll find out why in a moment. And this all comes together with special right triangles. All right. So now, hopefully, you've done that. You paused and kind of did that on your own to make it look nice. Um, we're going to be skipping these little marks closest to the axis, or you can make them small if you want to. If you made them big, I don't really care, um, but those aren't really going to come into play. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to label this thing. So I'm going to go back a couple slides here, and we're going to have to figure out how many degrees these are. So on the outside where we're labeling our degrees, we're going to continue to label our degrees. 
So this is probably the easiest one. This one here is 45 degrees. That's the halfway point. And if you think about it, each of these little marks is split into one segment, two segments, three segments, four segments, five segments, six segments. If this whole turn is 90 degrees and you're splitting into six segments, 90 divided by six is 15 degrees. So this would be 15 degrees, but I don't need that one. I do need this one. 15 more than 15 is 30. 15 more than 30 is 45. 15 more than 45 is 60. Look familiar? You see the 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90. This will all come together over the next couple little lessons on how special right triangles fit here together. Now, I don't care about 15 and I don't care about 75 because we don't have a 15, 75 degree, 90 degree triangle in a special triangle. There is one that exists, but you're probably going to need trig for that. These you don't really need um, trig, but they overlap because it is trig to be continued. So then after that, here's 90, uh, 15 more than 90 is 105, 15 more than 105 is 120. I'd like you, this is part of your mission, to continue to label all of these yellows all the way around. Now I'm not going to show you the final answer, but here I did these guys, and then your job is to label this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. That's one thing I'm going to be checking. One thing I do want you to notice is that 30 degree pattern, I don't know if you can see this with my face and covering it off, but there's a 30 degree pattern. Those are the reds, greens, and blacks. So here I'm gonna circle these in purple. That's a um, 30 degree. This is related to it because it's 30 more. This is related to it because it's 30 more. This is related to it because it's 30 more. So all of these reds and greens differ by, I'm sorry, reds, greens, and blacks differ by 30. And then if you think about it, well, what about these blues? Well, the blues are all 45 degrees apart. So 45, 45 more is 90. I wonder what 45 more is. Is. I do want you to notice that pattern. Every single one of these dots skipping the middles, here these blues, increase by 30. And then if you just go every kind of eighth of a turn, <laughs> so an eighth of 360 is 45 degrees, um, you're going to get these little block, um, blue squares are 45 degrees apart. Remember that. That's vital in terms of your memorization and what you need to know for trick. Now, why do we call it the unit circle? I'm so glad you asked. Here's why. Because the radius of a unit circle is one unit. One inch, one meter. We're not going to call it inches or meters because the one meter circle sounds strange, but the unit circle sounds pretty cool. So it's called the unit circle. Um, we're not going to have the radius be two because that's called the two unit circle. That's kind of dumb too. It's the unit circle. So the radius is one unit. Hmm. I wonder what the circle's circumference is. Remember our circumference formula previously? Pause the video, see if you can figure that out. What's the distance around the circle? Well, if you did this on your paper, if you did, Circumference equals 2 pi r. That was from one of the beginning slides. And the radius is 1. You substitute a 1 in for your r, you get 2 pi times 1. So your circumference is going to be just 2 pi. I know that that's like 6.28 because pi is 3.14. But when you're working with radians, and that's the development of this idea for you, you're going to always put things in versions of pi. That's the hard part for students. There is a decimal, 6.28, but we're gonna call these things in terms of pi. So now the next thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to say, well, if two pi is the complete distance around the circle 
from wherever I start to wherever I end. Well, then, how far of a distance is it to here? This whole purple thing, the complete circle is 2 pi. Well, then this guy is going to be pi. So you put a three, um, I'm sorry, you put 180 degrees on this marking, but in parentheses, I'd also like you to write this as pi. It's 180 degrees, but it's pi radius. And a radian is called a radian because it relates to the radius. And in the unit circle, if I were a bug and I walked halfway around the outside, I'd be walking 180 degrees. But if I wanted to know a distance or a radian measure, which is related degrees, I'm going 3.14 or pi units. What about the top and what about the bottom? Good question. The top is, if this is pi, now I'm focusing on radians here, these are radians. This top here is one half of pi. So if a full turn is two pi, a half turn is just single pi. Well, what's a quarter turn? A quarter turn is half of the one pi. So you get half pi. These are the same thing, half pi and pi over two. Okay, because pi times one is just pi, so pi over two, you can write it like that. Um, this is the way you're usually gonna see them, but we'll talk about that as we move along. So here's your last mission. I'm almost done, thanks for bearing with me. So if this is half of a pi, this is one pi, this is one and a half, yes, you could write it as one and a half, Pi, but it'll never be written as one and a half. It'll be written as three halves, that is one and a half. And then this is two pi. I wonder what this one is. Hmm. Well, here's where those 45s and 90s come into play. Look at this. That's one piece of pi. That's two pieces of pi. I'm doing the middles only. That's three pieces of pi. And this is four. So I've got one, two, whoop, uh, not two, Shabuski, come on, man. Two, three, and four. I can fit four pieces in one. Now remember, one is a halfway of a turn. This is where it gets a little tricky. So if I can fit four pieces, notice how this section here is half of the one, but if I split it into fourths, this is one fourth of the one. Now you could write one fourth, but I'll leave the one off and I'll just put pi over four. This is one fourth. This is two fourths. Yes, two fourths reduces to one half. You don't have to write that. This is three fourths when I stop at this middle. So that's going to be three pi over harder here. And this is four-fourths. Yes, four-fourths is one. Okay, no big deal. Now I'm going to get my eraser out here. I'm going to erase all this. And I'm going to say, okay, well, that's all good, but there's other things that are important here. And those other things are these other dots in the middle. What about these other dots? Well, this is where you kind of think of these as 30 degree marks and these guys are all related. So I'm gonna to go to green here and I'm gonna be talking about this and this. You always count the quadrangles and this and this and this. Notice I'm skipping over these middles which I've already labeled. Hmm, how far is this if I walk it? Well, this walk is one of the pies. And if I split these into equal sections, I now have one, two sections, three, four, five, and six. I've split the one into six. So this is one sixth of pi. Well, what about this? 
I went two six of a one, a one is a halfway point. Two six, if I reduce two six, what do I get? I could put two six i, but I'm gonna just reduce that to one third and call this i over three. I will put these two answers up here in a second. Pause your video and we do it. Okay, here we go. One six, two six, three six. Notice how whether I do this in fourths or sixth, three six reduces to one half, and two fourths reduces to one half. I'm on the green now, so three six. Okay, so one six, two six, reduced to one third. Three six, reduced to one half. Four six. Hmm, this is why trig becomes tricky for students because they're bad at reducing. Divide by two, you get two. Divide by two, you get three. So this is two thirds. So I'm going to do two pi over three. Okay, so one six, two six, three six, four six, reduce. Five six, that can't be reduced. So that's called five pi over six. And then once again, when I get back to here, I get two six six, which is one. Huh, I wonder what another sixth is. You might be inclined to go one and one sixth, but change it to seven sixths. So these you can all put in parentheses. The parentheses, these are your rating. We'll talk a little bit more about that next time. I've got a little animation to show you. But you should have your degrees all the way around. You should have your radians all the way around. And if I show you this kind of final picture here, it's kind of what it's going to look like. All these blues, these are your radians. Put these in, um, put these in parentheses, and those are the ones we're going to be really focusing in on. Because mathematicians don't mind degrees, but they prefer to work in radians. Okay, so this whole idea on how this all fits is very important to understand it. You're going to create this on your own. You are then going to turn this in to me um, and submit it into Canvas. Thanks for listening. Have a good day.